I think it's already late, so I don't want to take your time. I'll request uh, Sarina Jain to take forward. No problem. <laughs> The 2000 Young Person of the Year, also known as the Young Achiever, goes to Miss Makita Ahuja. <laughs> Miss Makita Ahuja is a visual artist, an awardee of 2008 Houston Prize, as well as a 2009 Joan Mitchell Award. She received an MFA from University of Illinois at Chicago in 2003, mentored by Carrie James Marshall. Her work has been exhibited across the United States, as well as in Paris, Brussels, Berlin, India, and Dubai. some of her artwork on both the screens that are on each of your sides so you can get a good view of that. Congratulations. We'd love for you to say a few words. There is no clear roadmap for how to be successful as an artist. Like any entrepreneurial effort, the artist has to find their own way. I've been most helped along by the support of my parents and sister who have always encouraged and nurtured my focus on being an artist. I appreciate this recognition from the Gopio in no small part because it is an organization that focuses on the Indian community and contributions of Indians. As a mixed Indian and African American woman, I've often felt outside of the cultural assumptions that typically align people of shared ethnicity. Each community, African American and Indian, has their own historic and contemporary preoccupations with color, nationality, and ideas of cultural allegiance that welcome some while marginalizing others. My identity as an equally mixed Indian and black person challenges these two often rigid categories. The duality of this duality of identity is the central theme of my artwork, for which I draw on the aesthetic traditions of each side of my cultural heritage. Having often felt on the margins of both black and Indian communities, it has been to my surprise and delight that by embodying my complex subjectivity in my work, I have gained entree into both communities on my own terms. This positive outcome is borne out through experiences such as this Gopio Award, in which it is through my artwork that I am recognized and embraced by the community. It is for this inclusion and recognition that I am most proud and appreciative. I'm honored to share the stage with the other award recipients, and to those who nominated me, to my parents, and to all my friends and everyone in the audience, I say thank you. Feel free to say Bale Bale. This table really wants to say it, so please, by all means, shout it out. The next award goes to the 2011 Friend of India Award to Mr. Paul Samaski. Paul serves as a co coordinator for Asha Hartford, which is now its own chapter and works closely with their satellite Asha Yukon organization. Both groups with the support of the generous sponsors, such as Gopio Connecticut, organize several fundraisers every year on behalf of the, tr the Trust Schools for Disadvantaged Girls in Gujarat and the DF Blind School in Kolkata. For more information, please visit celebrateindia.org. What a great name. Congratulations. May I request Dr. Gondani to please be here? Thank you. There's a proclamation from the governor, and I'd like to read it. State of Connecticut, by His Excellency Daniel P. Malloy, Governor, 
official statement. On behalf of the state of Connecticut, I, Daniel P. Malloy, Governor, take great pleasure in congratulating Mr. Paul Szymanski as you are honored by the Global Organization of People of Indian Origin with the Friend of India Award. This recognition is a testament to your outstanding service and commitment to excellence. Through your selfless work, you have demonstrated your dedication to your community. Your energy, enthusiasm, and leadership are truly impressive. This award celebrates your contributions to the state of Connecticut. I congratulate you on this honor and wish you the very best in the future. Therefore, I, Daniel P. Malloy, Governor of the state of Connecticut, do hereby convey honor and recognition upon Mr. Paul Szymanski in the state of Connecticut. everybody. Thank you. It's, it's great to be here with all of you this evening on behalf of myself and my wife, Rosemary. Well, many of you here may be wondering, how did a guy like me get so involved in the Indian community? Well, here is the two-minute story. Sarah told me I have to be brief. <laughs> my wife's brother, back in 2007, invited my wife and I to visit India. And we had the opportunity to visit the DF School for Blind Children in Calcutta. My brother-in-law was introduced to the blind school while on a business trip to India by a survivor of 9-11 who grew up in Calcutta. Rosemary and I came back from the trip to India greatly inspired by the work at the blind school. We also discovered an amazing country that we have come to greatly admire. Now, couple that with what we were seeing back home in Connecticut. In my workplace, at the shopping malls, at the universities, we saw a vibrant and growing Indian community. And I realized that I did not know that community at all, and they didn't know me. Then I had my aha moment. You see, I'm one of those people who believes that Quite often, God will arrange circumstances in your life to make a very clear path for you. And for me, one of those paths became working with a Connecticut-based charity called the Starfish Children's Fund, as well as the international charity, ASHA for Education, a Hartford chapter. And we decided to do a fundraiser back in 2008. And I am very pleased to tell you here that the first cultural organization to support that fundraiser was Gopio, Connecticut. Bale, bale. <laughs> and you have been a loyal supporter ever since. Asha Hartford has grown since then, and we even have a successful satellite group at UConn Stores Campus. As was mentioned before, our projects now include the DF Line School, and three schools for disadvantaged children in Gujarat. Our supporters come from very diverse backgrounds, which gives us an opportunity to introduce people to Indian culture and develop friendships in a way that might otherwise have happened. I am deeply honored and humbled by this award, but I must tell, but I must tell you that this Friend of India Award belongs not only to me, 
but also to our volunteers and to our generous and loyal supporters like Gobio, Connecticut. Thank you and congratulations to all of you. Thank you. The next category is the 2011 Indian American Achievers Award. Within this category, there are three subcategories. We, I would, the Gopio, Connecticut, would like to call upon Ms. Vidya Teradesai. Ms. Vidya Teradesai has been selected for Gopio Community Service Award in recognition of her tireless efforts to better the lives of the underprivileged in our community in the United States and in India. She has raised funds for homeless shelters, Norwalk Senior Center, Evergreen Foundation, and others for the Women's Hospital in Baroda, India. She has received numerous awards for her community service, including the RSVP Award for Up Excellence. I also hear she's an amazing cook. <laughs> I would like to call Mike Fidel, Mike Fidel to please present the award. If I stutter, please excuse me. I also want to thank my father who lived a life of selfless service. I like to thank my husband also who helps me return the cans that I collect because without his effort, I would have a big heap of cans in my backyard. <laughs> but most of all, I really want to thank my spiritual guru of South India by name Satya Sai Baba. is my inspiration. He has provided pure drinking water for millions of America, millions of Indians who could not reach to the even dirty water. He is running also the hospitals and the educational institutes free of cost to those who can or cannot afford. He really is the one that inspired me. One of the workers working in one of those hospitals is what inspired me to do the diaper project in India. For the underprivileged women who came to hospital to take the newborn baby home who did not have any clothes. They would wrap the baby in their sari, take it home. And that hurt me a lot. And so I decided maybe I could do something about it. And I decided I'll start making the chapatis. The Indian chapatis we all know. I make the chapatis, I sell them. Every penny of it, I try to use for the, the children in India to buy them the clothes. Every week, we started this program in February of 2005. It's still going on. Every week, we give about 42 packages to this general hospital in India, in Baroda, Gujarat. Along with that, we also do the scarves for the homeless shelters here in Norwalk, in Stanford, and also in Bridgeport. So, this is basically all I do. <laughs> I also make of my guru, my teacher, is love all, serve all. We are all one, so why are we not helping each other? Was the